Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian. And Jinx here. And welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 on the PlayStation 5. Alright, so in today's episode, we're going to be probably attacking our brother here. Because I really don't think I want to wait to try and assassinate him. Uh, with the scheme exposed, seems fairly unlikely we'll get it done. We'll have to spend a ton of money in order to uh, get more agents. And I think that money would be better spent on men in arms, and then we can also use those in future conflicts. So that's the plan here. We're going to just save up some money, get some men in arms, and we also need to get a doctor. Uh, last episode, I said I was going to get one, or I was going to uh, hire somebody who was in our court, which she might already be gone. I'm not Martha. entirely sure. There she is right there. Can you pin characters up in the console version? Looks like that's a no. There's no pinning of characters. That's something that's in the PC version. You can pin a character up on the top right of the screen so you can like, or multiple characters if you want. So you can always access them easily later. I often use it as a, a tool to remind myself about something I want to do in the future. But yeah, we'll have to, to build up the treasury. Did you hire her? No, I don't have any money. Oh, yeah, you broke. Yeah, we're broke. We need another month or so saving up. And then we'll hire her first, and then from there on out, we'll work on the men at arms, guys. Like, we tried to kill him quietly. Yeah, we have to do war, though. A scheme at court. My spymasters come to me with grave news. While we do not yet know who, someone is plotting to kill me. Well, that's not good. I think it's your brother. I kind of feel like it's our <laughs> brother as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're trying to kill him. He's trying to kill us. So this is, is not a good situation for us. It's probably that baby. <laughs> <laughs> so what we need to do is set our spy master to disrupt schemes. I should have done that as soon as we canceled our uh, mission to to try and kill our brother. What if she's trying to kill you? That's always a possibility. <laughs> uh, if your spy master joins a scheme against you, uh, then it gets a, a ton of points towards success. However, one thing you'll notice here, Jinx, is that she is currently terrified of us. Oh, okay. She's terrified due to your dreadful reputation. Trembling before you, she'll never oppose you directly. Oh, I see. I guess yeah, we don't have to go through it through it that way. We could have seen it through here. Our masters don't handle things directly. Well, she's a craven. Well, if they're terrified, that, then they won't ever go against you. Oh, I see. So one kind of tool you can use to control your vassals in your court is the dread. So getting your dread as high as possible will get characters terrified of you. Now, some characters are never going to be terrified of you, like the really courageous characters. But yeah, that's one tool you have in your People arsenal. Dread me. In real life, or are you dominant in the game, Jinx? In real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and hire that physician. We already have one, so we don't need to go through it that way. We're going to recruit her to court, and she's actually cheaper now. If you guys recall, last episode she was uh, 40 gold. Now she's only 30. Well, yeah. Because she's, she's older. Older. Yeah, she's, she's an old lady. Like, ain't got much time left. <laughs> yeah, basically. Uh, so she should be in our uh, court as our physician, or she might not accept it yet. Oh, there she is. All right, so we now have her in the court, and we have to actually uh, hire her. That name uh, so just makes me think about dark. <laughs> Unfortunately, we can't seem to sort. She died in this version. <laughs> Who are you talking about, Marta? Oh yeah, yeah, from the show Dark. Uh, yeah. That's a, a Netflix show, guys, and it is absolutely fantastic. It's a German show. You gotta watch it in German. You have to, yeah. And so you'll have to read bad. the subtitles. I don't like dubbing. Period, though. I always I don't either. read the subtitles. Huh? There she is. She got really wrinkly. All right, so we want... Since we last met. <laughs> <laughs> she's a lot older. Uh, she's 60 years old. So we're going to appoint her as our court position, and that's going to cost 10 gold, so luckily we have a little bit of excess money here. And now we've got a court physician, which that's important for, you know, if your character ever gets ill or any characters in your, your court get ill or injured, and also for your wife during childbirth. So we got another guest here. He'd be an accomplished commander. Well, your wife's never gonna not be a baby. She, uh, how old is she? 
she's got to be close soon. Yeah, she's got another year left, Jinx, and then we'll be able to uh, actually go through with this marriage here. And it looks like we were not able to sway our Archbishop, unfortunately. We need to get that up to 50. I think we have a really low chance of success, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's 44% chance. And then, again, our Marshal continues to improve our Knights and our other Commanders. So that's always helpful, again, having really good agents. And we got a Marshal perk. All right, so let's go ahead and get the perk selected. And we'll see if we have enough money for some men-at-arms. All right, so our two choices here... Oh, actually, we only have one choice. Yeah, we have to get the Engineered for Destruction. Increasing naval speed, not that helpful. Unless you're going to, like, Crusades. Uh, then it's nice to get your troops there sooner. Uh, siege Weapon Effectiveness would be nice. And then the next one will be Raid Speed and Supply Capacity. We can't raid. So that's not all that helpful. Uh, but the Supply raiding. Capacity is great. <laughs> Yes, as the Vikings. That's my favorite. Yeah, doing the sea raiding. Pretty fun overall. Uh, so let's take a look at our men in arms, guys. And see if uh, we can afford anything. So I think we should probably improve them next. And it's a good thing we got that perk, too, because we actually have some siege engines. Uh, but these are also very expensive. And it looks like it's uh, too expensive for us right now. It's the alcohol tab. Mm hmm. Uh, so he invited us to his feast. You want to go to his feast, Jinx? Hell yeah. Yeah, we'll go to the feast Although now. what if that's where they're going to poison you? That's a possibility. Now, one thing to consider uh, when it comes to feast is that they can make you fat. So if you do a lot of feast, you'll you'll see your character get really fat. Your character really will become a chunky boy. Yeah, yeah. You can uh, gain weight, and you can be really skinny as well. Uh, and then also the... Well, I'll show you guys this, oh, this in a minute. Oh, the right now? Yeah, we're going right to oh, okay. it. Okay. Yep. We're not going to wait. No I'm delay. Hungry. All right, so let me just pause this here so I can get out of the screen. Uh, but the size of your character, uh, first of all, there's height. Uh, you'll see height differences when they're standing next to each other, uh, especially with the war the Royal Court mechanic that's going to be coming in the DLC because then you have that 3D Royal Court that you can go inside of. It's really, really cool, guys. Uh, again, go check out that Polish series on the channel on PC if you want to see how the court looks. Uh, but, yeah, it's a really cool mechanic. Looking forward to it coming to console. Uh, but, yeah, there are height for different characters. And that's just, you know, based on what they're, you know, how they're born. But then there's also size, as in, like, muscle. Muscle mass or uh, fat. And the muscle mass is controlled by your prowess. So the higher your prowess is, which you see ours is pretty low. I'm not seeing it in here, but it's it's nine. So you're at risk of chunk. Yes. We could get fat. There's a real possibility of that. You can also get skinny as well. You can kind of starve yourself, too. All right, so we have a event here for the feast, the dilemma. Do you want to read it, Jinx? The feast is dwindling down, and I find myself deep in conversation with my lethargic acquaintance, Gutierre. He inquires about my opinion on ancient military campaigns, a subject he is deeply interested in himself. So feasts are a great, a great place for making friends and enemies sometimes. If we say it's a subject that fascinates me as well, it'll increase opinion with this character, and we'll be closer to gaining a friendship with them. Or you can say I could care less, and then we'll be closer to gaining a rivalry with them. Well, of course we're going to say this one. Who's this character again? Do we know him? No. He's heir to a county. Okay. So he's somebody's son. Alright, well it's a subject that fascinates us as well. Our character loves military matters. Troubled vassal. The pleading gaze I received from my vassal, Manuel, is taking on a desperate tone. A group of guests are approaching the corner he has hidden all evening, and the walls are hindering his escape. The poor man has never been good with people. So, as we've seen in the last episode, the traits of your character will affect, like, you know, the type of things your, your character likes doing and dislikes doing. And shy characters hate feast. I hate feast. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jinx likes feast. She doesn't like the people at the feast. I feast by myself. <laughs> <laughs> With a close group of and friends. Then I guess you can feast too. I mean, I, I've never seen you hate Thanksgiving, Jinx. That's, you love feasting Thanksgiving. You used to go to family get togethers, regardless of the family. <laughs> <laughs> Just want the food. <laughs> so I'll say, uh, I will distract the converging guest and we'll gain a weak hook on him because we did a favor, increase opinion with him. Or, because they come now, Manuel, tell us a story. Oh, don't do that to uh, him. That'd be messed so up. Mean. Yeah. We'd get a lower opinion because it's cruel. So, Save him. 
This character is unmarried. And he's a mayor. Okay, so he's probably the mayor of one of our cities. He's an adventurer. So we will say, I will distract the converging guest, and we'll get a uh, hook on him. And I'm wondering which uh, city he's currently in. And we have Feast, the conversation partner. We got a lot of feast events happening. As one plate of food is replaced by the next, my friend Gutierre. Oh, is he our friend now? Okay, so we made friends with him, apparently. That's he all we needed. Us. Yeah. Yep, he's our friend now, so we have two friends. Uh, so he goes on and on about our friendship, and that was how we salvaged that mess. Are you sure I'm not boring you, my lord? So if we do this, we'll get the had in an interesting conversation for 10 years, a modifier, or we could just increase opinion with him. Well, let's see what this does here. So this is going to give us diplomacy and learning. Must be one hell of a conversation to remember it for 10 years. 10 years. years. <laughs> We're going to be thinking about this conversation. So yeah, we'll get that and increase our stats. And the feast is over. What a feast. I will remember the day spent in Count Munoz Halls for a long time to come. Now it is time to wash off the traces of merriment and wine and once more resume my duties as the Lord of the Realm. Traces of merriment. You know what that is, right? <laughs> it's like all over our pants right now. Oh, gosh. <laughs> That's why he's holding his hands like that. Yeah. It's, like, I, it's, it's everywhere. I'm sorry. All right, so because we went to the feast, we're going to lose stress, and uh, we'll increase the opinion with the Count here for going to his feast. Those are the ways that you get rid of stress, guys, is holding feast and hunts. And how much stress you lose is based off of your character's traits. Uh, or you might even gain stress if you're somebody who doesn't like feast. All right, so we've got a bunch of things popping up over here. We've got a sinful bishop, of course. Neighboring rulers lost a war. And somebody was taken prisoner. All things we didn't really need to know. A scheme at court. So my spy master has come to me with a discovery. She is certain that my courtier, Goto, is scheming against me. So is this the person that is trying to kill us? This woman who's got the bug, giving her a blankie. <laughs> so yeah, she is trying to murder us. Wow. So we say, let the traitor be known to all. Now there's also the chance that she could be lying to us. Again, with her being terrifying, I, I highly doubt she's operating against us. So we say, let the traitor be known to all. She'll be exposed as an agent in the murder scheme against us. Spend 150 prestige and lose 20 opinion. We could throw her in jail, which is probably what we do here. Can we torture for information? There's a lot. Yeah, we actually can do that in the game. Uh, or you say, whether true or not, I will not accuse Goto. Uh, yeah, we're going to throw her in jail. All right, so with her in jail, this isn't the first person we've had in jail. I think we had some prisoners. You know what? Actually, this was the first person we had in jail, yeah, isn't it? we haven't had anybody Yeah, we haven't had any prisoners. I think I was thinking of the, the Polish campaign that we're, we're doing right now. So this will be the first person that we can deal with. So you'll go into your court... We have a prisoner section here, and there's a whole bunch of stuff you can do here. Now, if you just press square, you're only going to see these options here. Those are not the only options you have. So, ransoming her, uh, they have to be able to pay the ransom. Now, if she had a, a liege other than us, then he would, he or she would pay the ransom, and so they would have to have the money. Uh, but with her being a courtier, she would have to pay her own ransom, and she's probably broke. Uh, so that's why there's no ransom option. You can just release her. That'll improve their opinion with you, and uh, I think you lose some dread for just releasing her for nothing. Or you can just straight up execute her. That's an option as well. But those are not the only options. To get access to the other options, you have to go through the character actions. All the way down here at the bottom, and then there's another uh, button here for negotiate release. And this gives you a whole bunch of options. And they are contextual, so more will pop up if they're available. So we can banish her from our realm, we can gain a weak hook on her, or we can force her to take the vows and become a nun. Send her to the nunnery. Now, there's a whole bunch of other options. Like I said, like you can like castrate people in here, blind people. Again, it's got to be it's contextual based on what you're able to do. Um, you can torture people, send them to the dungeon, all kinds of interesting things. Now, I don't know what all is available in this version of the game, because obviously I'm playing on the PC version, so I know they've added some stuff, but there's a lot of other things you can do here, guys. 
Uh, well, yeah, what do we want to do with her? She's trying to kill us, so I feel like... Yeah, let's torture her. You could torture her. Now, torturing her does have a cost. We will have to spend some piety, and we actually don't have 100 piety right now, so that would put us in the negative. Why do you need piety to torture people? Because we're torturing a good Christian. I mean, they the Christians aren't really good at torturing people. We're torturing a good Christian, though, so... Is she a good Christian? As far as we know. Obey thy master. And then this is how you can get secrets. You're asking if you could torture for a secret. If she has a secret, she could reveal it while we torture her. Now, torturing, the reason why it's not in this option here is because you're not releasing her. You torture her, and then she's still in your dungeon. Four. So I don't know that we want to spend the piety, but I do want to know who's plotting on us. So I think we're going to have to torture her, guys. Yeah, we kind of know. We, we believe we know. But if we can reveal it, then it will make it so he will have difficulty uh, executing it the way we had issues. So let's torture. And no event popped up. So it looks like... We're going to let it play. Maybe. We'll let it play. Oh, there we go. Uh, why complicate matters? There's nothing like the good old rack. I should let Jinx read this. The sound when bones and sinews sta snap is quite unforgettable, but not as unforgettable as the pain Goto is soon to experience. I thought you might enjoy reading that, Jinx. So she's going to gain the recently tortured. It puts her in critical stress levels, so she could go insane, uh, as well as other different things, get depressed or whatever. And 5% chance she'll become a lunatic. She already looks a bit loony. Alright, so we torched her, but she's still in her dungeon. And she didn't reveal any uh, any plots, unfortunately. Does that just automatically happen if it's gonna happen? Yes. Yeah, if it was gonna happen, then after we hit that torture, uh, then it would've, would've popped up. We can marry now. Again, not having the alerts up at the top of the screen, man. That's one thing I really don't like. Uh, so yeah, let's go and send the proposal off. We'll get 100 prestige, she'll get 500, and we'll now... Well, I guess we already had the alliance. Alright, excellent. So we have some money for spending. We are saving up to increase the uh, cab uh, caballeros. You don't have any money now. You, you don't have any money now. <laughs> so, I feel like we need a few more troops here. Let me just take a look at his numbers, see how we compare. So he has an ally, which I believe is our cousin in Navarra. Now, we could attack Navarra, but he's got far stronger allies. He's got less troops. But look at his ally strength. 6,673. If we wanted to see who his allies are, we hold L2. We go to War and Peace. And these are his three allies. So he's allied with our brother Alfonso. He's allied with King Sancho of Aragon. And he's allied with King Philip. Of France and that's uh, where all those troops are coming the from French is the French yeah so we can't really attack him right now not as long as he has that powerful ally but we can attack Leon I'm not sure though how we would compare in numbers I think it would be too close honestly yeah I think it's just too close now you see he has caballeros as well damn damn him and uh, we just got the until death do us part that's for arranging a marriage. So this is an event about heresy. You'll get these all the time, so we're not going to read them. I'm just telling you that a heresy has popped up. And it gives you the chance to convert immediately, if you so desire, to that, that heresy. Uh, but yeah, we're just going to say, I don't get it, but I guess it makes them happy. And so yeah, we won't read those ones, because they're going to pop up quite a bit. And we have a wedding celebration. With my marriage to Queen Agnes... The realm expects us to throw a suitably extravagant wedding celebration. It is well within my right to collect a royal aid duty as part of this, but some may consider it tasteless to levy an extra tax during a time of jubilation. So, of course I'll collect it. <laughs> by not collecting it, we would get prestige. Now, as far as what you spend prestige on, well, in the, the current version of the PC game, it's really helpful for cultural... Uh, traditions. In this game you have different things you use it on, uh, but mainly what, what you're getting from this is the fame. Every time you earn a bit of prestige, you also earn fame. And the prestige is kind of like the, 
the like kind of like a monetary value. It's like a, a type of currency in the game you spend. Mm-hmm. While fame is something you're just always building up. And once you get to like certain levels, it increases your opinion with uh, all your secular lords and gets you one more knight. Uh, you know, one more knight position. And we outlived our rival. Oh, okay, that's Goto. She died in our prison. Oh. We never did anything with her. She starved herself. All right, so she died, and thus we gain prestige, and we lose stress because she was a rival. Like, oh, thank God. Doing horrible things to your rival is typically good so in this happy game. happy you could dance. Mm-hmm. Oh, we got more money. All right, so let me just take a look, see if he's invested any further in men-at-arms that we might want to counter. Okay, so his ally, which, I again, I believe is just... I can double check on this. I believe it's just our cousin. Oh, wait, no. Oh, okay. That's just that guy. We could technically ally him, too, if we wanted to. But yeah, it's basically our, our cousin here. Our problematic cousin. Yeah, and he has light footmen and bowmen. So we'll probably want to counter those. And we, we're going to have to fight him eventually in the future anyways. So let's go to our men-in-arms. We're going to create a new men-in-arms. And then what we're going to want to do is counter the light footmen, which are skirmishers, oops, and the bowmen. So the bowmen are already countered because we have the light cav. That's what they counter, is uh, archers. As for the skirmishers, we counter those with bowmen. So let's go in and get some bowmen. I like, I like archers. So we're going to create ourselves some archers. They're much cheaper than the light cav. So we'll be able to build them up to multiple sizes here. Get them up to 300. Really increase our overall troop numbers. And you can never have too many archers. Exactly. So I just keep on building up for this conflict with our brother and cousin. We want to make sure we're well prepared for it. Uh, now he'll have... Doesn't he... He's not allied to Aragon, so he doesn't have him. It's just Navara. And then we should have our ally over here. And we did finish construction in our capital. Uh, we built the bastions and curtain walls. All right, excellent. So we might want to get something else building there. And again, we are not able to sway him. There's no luck. And 44% in a paradox game is essentially like a 0%. <laughs> a 5% maybe. Whenever I uh, play these games, I'm looking for at least 80% whenever I, I try and do anything really important. Because that's the only way you're... you're have a good chance of succeeding i play risky oh no so they actually tried to uh, execute the assassination of us and which we have no heir by the way uh, i want to say it would be our brother that would inherit all yeah, our territory which is why he's trying to kill which is you. why he's trying to kill us uh, did you want to read this for us as i was about to bite into the most succulent piece of duck i had ever seen one of my servants keeled over clutching at his throat he had been helping himself to a taste of my meal at the very least, he served as a warning to not touch the bird while receiving just punishment for his crime. I do not know who is behind this, but they must be found and brought to justice. All right, so we gained the Watchful, which means it's going to be a, a lot more difficult for anybody to assassinate us for two years. So you see the hostile scheme resistance is going to go up by plus five. We got lucky there, guys. Very lucky. And I think if we hadn't had our spy master. Uh, doing the disrupt schemes, I think we probably would have got killed. So yeah, probably a good thing over, that we had that going. I'm sure we have plenty of people in our lands that are willing to operate against us who don't like us. No factions, though. So I just keep on building up these troop numbers, guys. And we no longer have an alliance with Barcelona because he died. Alright, so that's unfortunate. So who succeeded over there? Was it his son or somebody else? Yeah, it was his son. So yeah, it's our brother-in-law here. He doesn't care about his sister? Uh, well, typically you don't get the alliances immediately. Uh, you have to then negotiate an alliance instead. Oh, I see. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It depends on who it is. Because uh, you'll automatically get alliances uh, if they're certain types of relatives. But otherwise, you got to actually ask to form the, the alliance. So he's still allied with us. No problems there, which he has just a few troops, really. That is not a lot of troops. 
568 dudes is all we're going to get from him. That's not enough dudes. Yeah, so that is why we do have to have larger numbers than them. You and what I would say... Like twins. <laughs> What do you mean, how we look? Yeah. Weren't we going to change the way we look? Yeah, we were. We were Did you still want to go to the barbershop, barber Jinx? Uh, yeah. All right, let's go to the barbershop. Uh, so we can change our clothes if we want to. Let's leave that on default, though. Change your headwear up. We can do all that. But we're looking to change up our beard, right? Our beard. So what do you want? Like a full beard? Big, bushy beard. Big, bushy beard? <laughs> <laughs> Chin strap beard. Long wavy beard. Yeah, we can do that one. A pointy beard. If you want some point to it. Which one you like? The long wavy beard. You like the long wavy beard because it looks like mine. Yeah. <laughs> it looks just like mine <laughs> except for it's brown. My mine's black with, with a bit of gray streaked in through it. Gonna burrow in it. Mm-hmm. Build a nest. <laughs> <laughs> so we can get our cloak on here, which we already have. Uh, and we can change our hair color. If we wanted to go with a darker hair color seemed like you picked the darker color and it got yeah lighter. it did yeah it did get lighter all right we're just gonna go with the default apply those changes our beard must look mightier than our brothers and he is our heir by the way and not only that he's had a child before us mm -hmm. he has a daughter oh god that thing is hideous what <laughs> <laughs> it's a gremlin <laughs> that's awful jinx <laughs> His wife looks fine. I think it's just she'll she'll be fine once she she'll grow out of it, Jinx. You don't <laughs> grow out I'm of thinking. gremlin. <laughs> I don't know. Some babies be looking. I don't know. I guess most babies are okay. Yeah. When they, people are like, oh, you want to see my baby? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> They're scary. <laughs> Our son, when he when he was first born, he was all like. We called him Ivan the Terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because his face is all, like, uh, puffed up. Uh, he had a rough birth, apparently. And uh, he, he didn't look anything like like he looked at first, like he a couple like weeks later. in a boxing match. A little bit, yeah. All right, so we now have 3,300 troops. Let's go and take a look and see if he's got any more men. Again, just kind of building up for this conflict. He's got pikemen now, so we'll want to counter those. And then that will be countered with heavy infantry. And because everybody's going to rock pikemen... Although, you know what, we kind of want to counter his caballeros as well. So we might get pikemen instead of getting heavy infantry. Why does his wife and child like you? I mean, what reason because would they have to not like us? Yes, I go over there and have secret meetings with her all the time. <laughs> <laughs> that's the truth. Is that's that why your baby? he really wanted me. Yeah, that's my daughter. That's why he really wanted to be dead. You know, you can do all that. Really? I just got an idea. <laughs> we should do that. Now, we're currently working on something. We're still trying to get this guy here to like us. We gotta get him up to fifty. He's never gonna like you. One day, Jinx. He One day. You're smelly barbarian. But man. after that, we could seduce her. <laughs> That'd be like the ultimate kind of uh, disrespect to our uh, brother here. What do you and think, Jinx? Your wife. Yeah, and our wife. Yeah, I guess maybe if we're trying to, maybe we should work. Own. Okay, you're right, Jinx. Let's go ahead and romance our wife oh wait we still gotta wait until this mission's done all those take up the personal scheme so you can only do one at a time guys so we still gotta wait unfortunately so i suppose we'll romance our wife jinx so we need to get these pikemen so let's go and create them and build them up one more size here and yeah, he must really be stacking up the money because he's building the troops well, almost as fast as I am. Well, he's not rebellion anymore, is he? That wasn't his rebellion. That was oh. Duke Nuno's rebellion. I see. So our, our duke, our vassal, was dealing with the rebellion. But our uh, our knights keep improving. Again, we, we're going to have a good group of knights, I think. Let me just double check on this. But yeah, like he's level 33, our best friend. He's 22. Level 20, 14. Yeah, I mean, we got a fantastic group of knights. We got a couple people here that, you know, aren't great. But yeah, for the most part, this is a good group of knights, guys. So, what's going to become of the new friend that we made? Can he come live with us? Uh, you talking about this this guy here? Gutier. Yeah. Well, he's already in his court. Uh, oh, we he's could. He's got his own stuff. Yeah, we could bring him into our court. 
I suppose. But we wouldn't be able to because that's his father. So essentially his father is this count that doesn't oh, like us. Oh, I see. The one who went to his feast. Okay, so that's why he, he was at the feast. Yeah, he likes us a little bit now. So that's why he was at the feast is because it's his father's feast. That makes sense. And so when his father dies, which will likely be soon, he's 73 years old. Goodness. So when his father dies, then this you know powerful count up here will be our best friend. So oh, that'll be cool. yeah, that'll be a good thing for us. Yeah, I really want to do this conflict, but yeah, they keep on building up. And it doesn't help that he has the ally over here, so... Yeah, we could easily take him on now. But with his alliance over here... He too he's at war. bushy beard. Hold up, Jinx. And we still didn't sway him. Are you kidding me? We are just not succeeding there. Have you tried chocolates? I don't think so. We need to send him a letter or something. Alright, so... Let's just take a look at who he's currently fighting. So, he's probably got his troops over there. I don't know how much he's helping. But I imagine he has deployed his troops over there. So he might not be able to do much against us. And he has less troops overall because he's clearly had some that were killed. That baby doesn't belong to either of them. What, this one here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's a albino, that's why. Oh, okay. She's got the albino that makes trait. Sense. Mm -hmm. That gives you 15 natural dread. But it also decreases your opinion with everybody. So I feel like we could probably take him on now. If we just let our men at arms build back up. Up to strength. Although he keeps on building up too. Almost as fast as we are. Again, he must be earning decent money. And I suppose we need to build something here as well. So maybe we should do that next instead of getting a men at arms. Because that might be able to improve our monthly income. Or maybe our levies. And... We gain Chivalric Spouse for 10 years. Okay, so we'll take a look at what that modifier does. It's giving us 2 plus advantage. So that'll help us out in combat. Alright, so that's a good thing. She's an inspirational queen. Yeah, yep. Okay. She's helping us. It's, it's really helpful to have a good, good wife, a good spouse. She's got 12 siblings. Jeez. Good God. That's a lot what, of kids. Who's that mask guy? Uh, he probably got maimed. His oh, face did. I thought he was an assassin we could put to use. <laughs> <laughs> our knight became a blade master, so he's even better. Yeah, our, we got a fantastic group of knights, guys. Yeah, I feel like we're probably going to just go to war and just risk it. Just bro it out. Man. Yeah, whatever. Uh, we could always do that exploit to get another really good knight. Although knights can only do so much in conflict overall. But yeah, we could do that just to get another good one. Yeah, I think we might. Uh, we've already built up all these here with the exception of the, the pikemen. So we still need to get them built up. Let's also do this one. Just get up a little larger there. Yeah, we're going to try the exploit out, guys. See if we got any young ladies here that need a he wife. She needs a husband. Or, yeah, need a husband, <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> uh, she needs one. She's 44 years old. She's got all them kids. So no children would come out of this. Oh, she must already have a lover. Although we don't know of the lover. Maybe it's a secret lover. Died. Yes, that's what happened. You can see here. I just can't get to it. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get to things here, but that's her husband who died. He passed. Oh. You got something to say about him, Jinx? <laughs> no. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Jinx got a lot of comments about people's looks today. I just think everyone from the time was <laughs> ugly. <laughs> So let's find her a spouse with some fantastic prowess. Alright, so sort by prowess. And he's a similar age here. Anglo-Saxon. He's also lowborn. It's probably the best we're going to get here. We already have a Bjorn wolf. Oh, we do. Oh, that's our knight. Psh, that's why. Oh. His wife died. Oh. Oh, man. Well, we need to get him a... A wife then, right? I guess. Does he want one? I mean, he could be in mourning. Alright, so this has got to be a matrilineal marriage. I forgot to check that before, but looks like he accepted anyway, so no issues hey, there. He doesn't look like a Gaston. <laughs> Do we have anybody in our own court that we can marry him to? Uh, I guess we could just do her. I don't know who sure. she is, but let's marry them together. There we go. Get you a new lady. Yep. Let's 
So maybe they'll have some babies here. And we'll have a better night as well. All right, so if we looked at our nights now at this point, they should all be fairly high. Well, I guess you got these two lower level ones with the 10. Hmm. I thought we would have got rid of that guy. Yeah. Where's the new dude? He is here, right? Gashed yeah, on, right? I yeah. All right. Yeah, I thought we would have gotten rid of our level nines, which 10 is considered average. That's why I was trying to get us to have all of our knights be at least yeah, level really 10. Got better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just keep on improving. Uh, so what we want to do now is go ahead and get the martial perk, which that's one advantage we have as well over our brother. He's not going down the martial perks, he's going down the intrigue perks. Which is another reason we should take him out, because he's only going to get better and better at intrigue. Alright, so I think we're just going to do this thing. We're going to earn enough money here to have a bit of a war treasury, and then just declare war on him. And whatever happens, happens, guys. If we lose, we lose. We're just gonna wang it. Yeah. He doesn't really have a uh, ally anymore. Our cousin was just slain in battle. His, our uh, cousin For is not doing know. well in this conflict over here. I think he's losing a lot of troops. You can see here, he's down to 438 at this point, so I don't think he's gonna be all that helpful. So we'll just get... Maybe 60 gold here. I don't know how long that will last us. But I doubt he him? has much either. Oh, he's got way more money than we do. Yeah, that's a problem. All right. Who's our cousin fighting? I think he's, he's fighting over here for his ally in France. Oh. Yeah, I think they're attacking the Holy Roman Empire for uh, Luxembourg, I think, is, is who the war was over. And Count Sancho... Sanchu. Sanchu, excuse me. <laughs> gained attentive care. I was oh, thinking it was for like us. He's taking care of him. Okay. So, I suppose we're ready. And we finally swayed him. <laughs> it took <laughs> us long enough. I told you the jacket. We finally did it, guys. So, let's go ahead and romance our wife. Uh, we're, we can romance or seduce. We'll romance her, though. I'm going to scheme to romance her. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the first event, Declaration of Love. The time has come to let my feelings towards Queen Agnes be known. I want her to remember this day for the rest of her life. So we can sing a love ballad. We can secretly plant a letter in her chambers, impress her by winning a sparring match, <laughs> or go with my gut in the moment. So the way you want to do this is base it off of their traits, which I guess we already have her up here. So she's a martial intrigue character. So I would imagine she would probably like a sparring match. She might be interested in watching us fight. Oh, Though, watching you fight? Yeah. I thought you meant oh, fighting her. We're going to fight her. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's going to watch Jinx. So we'll do that. And this is a big long event here. You want to read it? I recruit one of my most senior soldiers and practice with them for three days straight. Once he deems me ready, we head together to the main courtyard. As we begin to spar, a crowd gathers, and their cheers soon draw none other than the heroic Queen Agnes. The soldier fights valiantly, but I disarm him with a final flawless thrust. I kneel before Agnes and declare my noble intentions. I dedicate this victory to you, Queen Agnes, bringing you honor as my only desire. My petal is speechless, but clearly flattered. Why else would she be smiling? Thusly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so our scheme to romance here will continue. All right, so that's the first little romance event, and I think we're ready to declare war here, guys. Let me just double check on our men in arms, make sure they've all completely built up, which they have. He has a larger war chest than us, so that's a negative. Yeah, that's a negative, unfortunately. Uh, but I assume we're making more money than him, but we also have more troops, which means it's going to be more costly for us. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and, and start this conflict, guys. So, we need to go in here, press square, declare war, and then we get to pick what we're declaring war for, what our objective is, and we're going to take the entire kingdom of Leon over. That's the goal here. So it's going to cost us 68 prestige. Uh, you can see the numbers here. Uh, so their military strength is inferior to ours. We have 40,051 when you count our allies. He has 2,681 when you count his allies. Now, your allies don't automatically come into the war. 
you have to actually pull them into the conflict. And so we're going to do that. It should be in here. We'll look to see if there's anything else in here we need to be aware of. We can also pull another dynasty members as well. Well, that's interesting because we're the, uh, the head of the dynasty. Oh. So we could pull them in, but they're not going to be able to accept because they're already allied. And they hate you. Uh, he would be willing to accept. But if we did it, it would decrease our splendor, which essentially is like the, uh, uh, the fame for renown. So renown is the thing you spend, and uh, splendor is you know the, the things that adds up for your dynasty. So that would affect us as well. So we're not going to do that, and, and, and we don't need him. But I was kind of curious to see if they would be willing to accept. We're also the head of this house, so every dynasty has you know houses within it. And so because we're the head of the house, we can also call in these characters. But yeah, we're only going to call in our ally, which will cost us prestige. 150 prestige, to be exact. So it's going to call him into the conflict. And then we're going to go ahead and raise our troops up. See where we want to raise them. I suppose he'll probably raise his up here in Laewon. So this is probably a fine place, I think. Uh, so let's go ahead and raise all of our troops up. And you'll see how the combat works in the game. It's, um, it's okay, guys. <laughs> It's okay. So you can see that little bar underneath our troops. That means they're still gathering. And he did uh, accept our request for him to join our war. Now we've got more beard power. All right, so they're almost gathered up. There we go. So what we need to do... Where's he going? He's going to run from us because we have more troops than he does. Now, when you do the wars, you want to have the uh, tooltip thing on so that you can see the tooltips and this will show you where your troops can fit. So you see the supply limit there, Jinx? Mm-hmm. And it shows us that this province here has 4,355 supply limit. That's how many troops it can supply. Mm -hmm. And so if we go over the supply with our troop numbers, then we'll start to take attrition, which means our troops will just start to die. Uh, so let's go ahead and start moving after him and see if we can engage him. What I think is going to happen is he's going to go sit on this mountain and force us to fight him on a mountain. Because uh, on the mountains, he's going to get... An advantage bonus. Oh, he's running. <laughs> so sometimes there's a lot of maneuvering he's as you try to and get. Out where he's going. Yeah, he's trying to avoid us. He did pull in his allies as well, but they're not all that strong. Uh, but they'll be coming from the back here. Yeah, you can see the 500 dudes right there. They'll be going after our stuff. Now, we can split this army up, but I was trying to get them engaged before we did. Now we got the problem of... Whoop. Now we got the problem that he's too far away. So this is a, a big part of war of the time period, and it's represented in this game. Or A lot of the, the warfare is maneuvering, uh, trying to you know get in the best position for the battle as possible, particularly if you're outnumbered. Uh, you're going to try and get away from the enemy. And the AI does a pretty decent job maneuvering their troops. I mean, it's not, no AI is great, but they do okay. Uh, they, they can be tricked easily into to making stupid attacks. Uh, but we're not going to do any of that trickery. I'm just trying to get them in a straight up battle. But I don't really want to chase them down. And so what we might have to do is go ahead and siege something down. Uh, and then in that case, we might want to split up the troops here. Because, yeah, we wouldn't be able to fit all of them in the capital. So we might split them up and have like half here on the capital and half over here. I think that would be the best way to do it. And so for where we want to assign them, we're going to base this off of the, the holding here. And the level of fortification it has. So this one has a level 3. While this one here has also has a level 3. So we can basically put them wherever we want. Uh, so let's go and split these guys. I'll show you guys how to do that. Because this is not as easy to do as it is on the, the PC version. So in the PC version, you just click split off new army. And then it separates the, uh, the troops. And then you can assign, you know, whichever levies or whatever men at arms, whichever knights you want in each one. But for whatever reason, the console version, this is always grayed out. And even when you have the tooltip on, it doesn't show you why it's grayed out. Yeah, that's a little frustrating. Yeah, so you can't split off new armies. So it's it's very irritating. And basically the only way to do this is to do split in half, which means you can't pick your troops, but then you can reorganize. 
and then you get the thing up that would pop up if you created your own separate army. Mm. It's a pain in the butt because that means I have to like, you know, like if I don't want any men at arms to to go after the capital because it's a horrible place for fighting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just just unfortunate that we have to do it this way. So what we're going to try and do is have. I'm thinking 2,500 in this army here. So with this army, we're going to go ahead and put ourselves in charge. And then we'll put him in charge of this army. Just because it's the, the one more at risk at being destroyed. Oh, and bestie. we need to deselect. Yeah, again, it's kind of a pain in the butt, guys, managing this in the, in the console version. It's just not as good. So much easier to manage your army in the PC version. So you do want to go out to the capital. Uh, in the capital, you can capture like their heirs or their wife or something like that. Goody and if chess. you, um, no, you don't capture any goody chests. I mean, you always get money from a siege. Uh, but if you capture their heir, it can help you win the conflict. Or if he's in in his castle rather than leading his troops, you might be able to capture him that way as well. So yeah, we'll do these sieges as of right now. It's nine months to complete that one and four months to complete this one. And the reason why this one's so much quicker is because of the siege engines, guys. But yeah, unfortunately, that is going to have to be the end of today's episode. It sucks. We just started a war and uh, we got to end it here. We'll have to pick up the conflict in the next episode. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell and leave a comment. Do hope to see you on the next one. And thanks for watching.